Hey everyone, welcome to live plein air painting with Heather at Afton State Park. Um, this is part of the St. Paul Art Crawl, virtual art crawl that we're doing live uh, events for um, in St. Paul. Now, as you know, Art Crawl could not be in person this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but um, I'm pretty excited. I, you know, after last night's big dance party, uh, uh, you know, hope, hopefully you didn't miss that one. Uh, that was pretty fun. I'm really excited to get out here and paint some more. So, um, we're currently at one of my favorite state parks, and this is called Afton State Park, and it's here in southeastern Minnesota along the St. Croix River. And uh, one of the things that I love about Afton State Park is that it has a great combination of prairie lands as well as oak savanna, which is where I'm going to be painting today, and um, different forest types, as well as the, you know, um, the like wetland zone. Um, probably you saw my recent work. I just completed a um, plein air painting that I had started here at Afton two weekends ago, I think it was now, of their wetland zone down on the St. Croix River. It's a beautiful park. If you haven't been out here, I highly recommend that you get here to Afton State Park. Support the parks, get your park pass, come on out. Um, someone asked me earlier today, hey, I thought all the state parks were closed. Um, well, the state parks, they are open, but what is closed is that there's like no facilities. Um, there are some outhouses here at Afton that are open. I visited them a couple weeks ago with my kids and uh, that's about it. So if you come out here to Afton State Park, you have to be prepared that, um, you know, your, your only facilities for going to the restroom are some of these outhouses or in the woods, but, but, but leave no trace, okay? All right, so I'm gonna get started here. Uh, I'm painting this beautiful scene right here with these beautiful white oak trees. Um, they are in this beautiful prairie land, and that's uh, one of my favorite things about Afton State Park. What it reminds me of is uh, I used to work uh, at YMCA store camps in Jackson, Michigan, and I was their lands for learning coordinator, and I did a lot of restoration of oak savanna there, so it, it's a little sentimental for me too. All right, I'm gonna switch the view. And we're gonna get started here. So what I have here today, uh, I brought my plain air painting setup, and my plain air setup includes a Julian French easel. That's the kind that I have here. Although this wouldn't be something you'd backpack in. Although I have taken it on solo trips into the Boundary Waters. It's a little bit of a tank, but uh, I love my Julian easel. Um, I've got a Blick canvas. I think this is an 18 by 20. Um, I have my Blick palette, it's disposable, so that makes it a little bit more lightweight and easy. So each one of these is like a different page. Of course, I have my PPE, very important to have your protection. Brushes, I just chose my assortment. Different things to wipe away, because I still do a reductive and additive paint method. All my paints, oh my goodness, look at them. My favorite colors, I kind of a limited palette. Um, it's hard for me to limit my palette sometimes, but, uh, you know, I've got my basics. White, red, green, yellow. I've got my mixture 375. I've got some turpenoid, so cleaning the brushes at the end. Oh, and, and if you weren't with me, my 375, uh, if you weren't with me in the broadcast last night, I explained a little bit about how that is the uh, mixture of turpenoid, liquid, and linseed oil. So that's a nice little medium there. Okay, I'm going to hook you guys into my screen thing. There we go. All right. And you get to see me painting. Let's get that all set up there. Okay, there we go. Thanks for bearing with me. actually as I was leaving here I saw these trees and I said oh my goodness I've got to paint that that's a common thing for me as you see I'm putting on my PPE and actually it's pretty warm so I'm gonna take off my jacket too by the way an original Lauren Olin jacket she does these Sayori weavings they're beautiful Yeah, 
medium yellow. Sap green. One of my new favorite colors this is a Michael Harden color. Uh, they're known for their high pigment load. So this is a King's Blue Deep. Um, it's one of my new favorite colors. I'm super fond of blues. I love blues. And it mixes really nicely with a bunch of other colors. Can't forget your ultramarine blue. purple, one of my favorites. Today I'm using a titanium white. I felt like uh, that kind of captured the mood for today. It's a little bright out here, so uh, as opposed to last night I was using a flake white, which gives a little more of a yellow tone. Uh, my titanium is going to capture the brightness of today's sun. as always I like to start with the ground on my paintings uh, I do that even when I do plain air so I end up doing a wet on wet technique called alla prima and uh, I'm using a burnt sienna as my ground it's a nice it gives it an orange tone but it's still neutral so I like that about it and uh, the nice thing about having a nice ground and working alla prima is that because this is still wet that means that it unifies the whole color scape. So, you know, I love to use bright colors and somehow they all go together, right? Well, oftentimes if you got a nice ground under there, it's kind of mixing in a little bit with your paint. And so it just unifies all the colors by drawing that one color throughout all the other colors. That's a good trick. All right, so in order to start with my ground, I'm gonna take my 375. I'm gonna take my big brush. And I'm going to mix that in with my sienna to get it nice and thin. And I'm going to lay that ground in. And a little more of that 375. hear a little bit of traffic. I'm actually right by the entrance of Afton State Park right now. So people are out here enjoying the day as they should. It's a beautiful day. There's a lot of really great hiking trails here. And actually my family is going to come out later to join me on some of those trails. get that covered. You know, a lot of people feel intimidated by a white canvas and that's part of the reason I cover it. Because uh, starting from white canvas, I mean that thing that just stares at you. <laughs> and uh, it can be really intimidating to know what your next steps are. So just by covering it, you've already taken that first step. No fear. Have no fear. Art making is a beautiful thing and everyone does their own kind. Everyone's art is beautiful in their own way. All right, we've almost covered it. Yes. Thanks, 
burnt sienna. What a lovely color. A little history about burnt sienna. You know, a lot of colors were originally ores found from different regions. And I do believe burnt sienna is um, like the dirt found from Siena, Italy. I do believe. And if somebody could fact check that and leave it in the comments, that would be great. Gotta smooth it out a little bit. There. Okay. We have our ground. trees there's because they're kind of in shadow there's some really nice purple tones going on in the shadows of those trees so I'm gonna mix a diluted mixture of some of my deoxine purple and what I'm gonna do with this mixture is I'm just gonna start drawing what I see in there drawing is the basis of pretty much all art but especially painting So I'm just kind of blocking it in. going to notice that I don't do like a very traditional plein air. <laughs> but everybody's got their own style and technique. I come out here and I throw a bit of Art of Heather Friedley at it, right? But I love plein air because I love to feel the wind in my hair, the sun on my face, and it makes me really happy to be outside. You guys can hear it, but there are some amazing birds right now. Just amazing. All right, I'm going to start um, picking out some of these light tones. I brought with me an old kitchen rag. It's cotton.
I'm kind of just picking out a little bit of the, you know, I see this like horizon line above like where the trees stop and I'm just trying to pick that out and really start blocking it into the painting. sunbeams behind it. That's something I really love to do. Because right now our sky's a little boring. You know, it's blue, it's beautiful. I want some something something. So I'm going to play with that in my mind and think about what kind of cloud I want to add in. no such thing as an art rule book so I can add whatever clouds I feel like in post. Um, I've taken a lot of pictures of these trees uh, the last time I was out here so just to let you know a little bit of the setup beforehand I did get pictures of my scene so that way because uh, it, it will probably be difficult to finish this in one sitting um, but uh, who knows it could happen if I get into a groove it just might come out. Most likely I'll have to finish my plein air painting in post that's okay this is called a field study um, if I don't finish it and then I go in the studio and finish it. But we'll find out because I have done them all on site before. It just depends on how I'm doing that day. And I can see the tops of the other trees over in the valley, which is really beautiful, kind of on the side of that big old tree. Okay, wow, we're really getting that blocked in. I love it. So far, so good. branches are really uh, indicative of that white oak. the shadows are coming down and playing right here. I'm going to try to capture that before uh, the light shifts because the one thing about plein air painting is that your light is always shifting. Your conditions are always changing. It's kind of like you have to get it in when you can. <laughs> or you'll have to remember later or you'll have to change your painting. I love how the grass is kind of lying down right here and kind of pointing that direction going up the hill. So I'm going to make sure to get the striations of the grass, kind of uh, an idea in there of it. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Oh, I love it. Oh, and that grass is going that way. Oh, that's so much fun. Okay, great. Woo! Love it. I'm going to back up and take a look because that's important to do occasionally. 
We're so glad you're with us. Let's see who we have here right now. I'm gonna take a look at my thing here. Oh, we have Maggie. Hi, Maggie and Zahur, yay. And Ben, yay, my husband. Thanks for watching, dear. And who else do we have? Shout out to Julie. Oh, better than Bob Ross, thank you. That's my aunt, she's so kind. I love her so much. Rick Seely, nice to see you. Josephine, hey, good morning. It's a beautiful day out here. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Auntie. Oh, let's see. Uh, Lisa, hey, thank you for being with me today. Luis, we've got, uh, let's see, Alice. Hey, I missed you, girlfriend. Congratulations on your engagement, by the way. Kimberly and Alexan. Yay, thanks everyone for joining me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get that position so you can totally see me. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, I'm still blocking in. So I got the idea of those grasses, very important. Uh, I'm trying to pay attention to both the foreground and the background in the distance right now because um, I'm really excited about these trees, of course, right? But I also gotta remember that back there, there's also the beauty and depth of the trees in the background, which are also oak trees. And so you can't hardly tell, but I've kind of left them a little bit in the sides in the back here. Get some of that light that's hitting the hill. Oh my goodness, I love it. Ooh, some of those fun grasses coming out. There's so much variation in the grass here. That's, that's the beauty of nature, right? It has so much natural variation. And when an ecosystem is healthy, man, you know, it's just, it's just the beauty of the, a healthy ecosystem. And I love the variation of grasses that we have here. They've done a really good job here at this park. Um, reinstalling these natural grasslands and preserving what they have. Thanks, Minnesota DNR. All right. Let's see. So trees are really interesting. I think they're always like people when I do them. They have a very fractal nature. So they start with the one, the trunk, and then they branch and they branch again and keep branching. And so that can be a really big challenge. And I try to keep that fractal nature in mind as I get these trees drawn in a little bit more. are a lot like drawing people. They're pretty hard. I, I, I struggle with them all the time. But it's that struggle that really makes the art sometimes, you know? Nothing's perfect, nor will your art be. If it was perfect, it'd be boring, right? And that's okay. We like that. We like that about you. With my uh, my silver Bristolton Bright, it's a number four for those who are watching. And I'm gonna make sure to put back. I'm gonna start doing wiping and addition. So <laughs> I'm a snow sculptor in the winter, um, and so when the conditions are right, we love that. We take away, but we pack back on, or we take away and then we add an element. And that, that's kind of how I do my, my, that's how I do my painting as well.
my youngest one, Sirius, who was dancing with me last night, as I was leaving, was like, Mom, are you going to go dance again? And I was like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but I'm going outside to paint today. And he's like, oh, Mom, I want to come with you and dance. And I was like, I know, honey, that was so much fun last night. He likes a party. so majestic they just make me want to cry they're so they're so cool what a what a beautiful ancient tree right the majesty and power of nature and they've got all these just glorious twisting branches oh they're so nice exhibition at the Minnesota State Capitol with the Outdoor Painters of Minnesota that is a beautiful uh, stunted white oak tree called uh, the Cleveland tree, which is actually um, in St. Paul. Uh, if you take the Mississippi River Boulevard all the way to Cleveland Avenue, there's an intersection there and there's a tree and it's stunted. It's beautiful. It's called the Cleveland tree. You should check it out. Speaking of, uh, I know last night I was talking a lot about personal protective equipment. Uh, you know, you can see I'm wearing my gloves because I'm touching things and I don't want to absorb those chemicals into my system. Uh, another protective equipment that I wear out here is my hat to keep the sun from burning my eyes, as well as I put on sunblock today and bug spray because guess what? Ticks are out in force. So make sure to always wear your PPE, everyone. Whatever that looks like. just feel the calm of that nature? I sure can. Feels so calm out here right now. Let's see. I'm having uh, a little breeze. The breeze is uh, moving my palate quite a bit. Let's see. I'm going to
we go. We're starting to get some of those beautiful silhouettes. I'm going to back up so I can take a look from afar. Awesome. Wow, it's really, you know, I love seeing it when I back up because sometimes you really can't tell what it looks like up close because you're just like in it almost literally. So that's really good. I love it. the fact that the tree is throwing that beautiful silhouette shadow right on the ground. That's those trees in the background. Don't forget about them. I'm going to kind of gently kind of get them in there a little bit. Remember, this isn't purple isn't the color it's going to be, but we're just laying in the darks and the light values. But purple does inform what the rest of the colors are going to look like. That's for sure. like that but since uh what caught my eye was right at the entrance you're gonna hear some cars thanks for joining me by the way if you're just joining me now i'm here live at afton state park doing plain air painting in the style of impressionists of yore outside in nature enjoying time out here What is true is that uh, I work uh, thin to thick. And that kind of layering is important for oil painting. Because you don't want to, you, you really, it's very difficult to do a thin layer on top of a thick layer. And because I do such thick and pasto painting, I have to make sure that what's laid is played later. Okay, so this is like great bait making, you know, getting it in there, and then really boom, boom, gonna get in those colors later. You make a mistake, you wipe it away. Don't forget, you can always try again. That light is coming from behind the tree. That sun is bright today and gorgeous. Oh, we're finally getting some clouds. Look at these beautiful puffy clouds. I'm going to try to maybe capture a few of those.
just softening up some of those edges there. That cloud is not harsh. The cloud is soft and puffy. I'm going to stand back and look at that. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to a few more people that are here on my feed. Thank you so much for joining me. We have Jan. Hi, Jan. Sasha, lovely to see you here. Hope things are going well. Lisa, hello. And Lori. Amber Sanchez. Hey, girlfriend. Johnny, woohoo! I'm so excited y'all are here. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to be occasionally checking my feed so that way, uh, you know, if you have any questions about plein air painting or just painting in general or about life, I, I'm not a therapist, but I can give advice if you need it. <laughs> All right. I don't like those clouds later. We'll find out. But the nice thing about oil paint that is one of my favorites is that it's, it doesn't dry very fast. And so I can do one thing and then change my mind later. And that's a good thing. Get in some of those shadows again. Underneath that are coming forth on the grasses. Oh, they're so cool. Get that movement of the grass. How it starts sloping over the hill. The movements of these grasses coming in this way. sticky sticks right here that are cool. I don't know what they are, but they're kind of cool. I see some like flowers over this way that are like deadhead flowers from the last fall. I'm going to just uh, suggest them. Brushy, dead, kind of beige grass, kind of doing this. I might even get a little medium on my fingertip just to wipe away a little bit more strongly. Somebody asked me last night, will your paintings be for sale after your live shows? Yes, once they are done, please uh, make sure to continue checking my Instagram, which is at Friedley Arts, and my Facebook, which is right here. And uh, everything will be listed, um, price, size, uh, on there, and whether or not it's been sold. if you are in love with something that I'm doing and right away you're like that's the one I really need it just reach out uh, you can email me or send me a PM a personal message if uh, you email me uh, my email is heather at freedlyarts.com
take a look. And I'm going to wipe off the buildup on my brush. Actually. So the park is really long okay. and there are trails that are mostly I think winter trails on the north side of the park that you can park on the street but hardly anyone ever uses them and it's beautiful. It's like a field walk kind of like this. It's really nice. Okay. Um, so if you had, I'm trying to think here, I think if you go back out to the main road and you go north there's going to be like another street that goes to the right. I, I can't remember like the name of the street, but um, you'll kind of see it. It'll be on the right. There'll be like a little pavilion thing. It just is a board, you know, and then um, that's where the trail starts. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, Travis. And, and what's your name? I'm Linda. Hey, nice to meet you, Linda. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Take care. Sometimes you know the secrets of where people are not because it's pretty busy today. Um, that was, uh, I'm, I'm, oh man, I feel so honored and thrilled. That was a gentleman who watched my painting last night live and they just happened to be here today and he was like, hey, I think I know her. <laughs> That's so cool, you guys. That's so cool. He's a painter too. We're going to paint together someday. That'll be fun. connections and reaching out to people and like just living life to the fullest you know life's pretty good we got lucky That's right. So actually, Travis, oh, he saw me on Instagram. So I had posted on Instagram uh, yesterday my finished piece of the painting down at St. Croix River. That's what it was. Oh, and he gave me such a kind compliment. Oh my goodness, you guys. People are so kind. You guys are so kind. Thank you for being here with me today. Okay.
What did Bob Ross always say? Happy little accidents, right? <laughs> huh. All right, Bob. I got to channel my inner Bob Ross. Here we go. how this branch just comes down and woo, comes right back up. Kind of the sweep of that arch, you know? I'm just trying to capture the feeling of that branch. back up and take a look. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Hey, you know what? Sometimes as an artist, we have to make subtle shifts and changes. And so what I'm uh, kind of focusing on right now are these three trees. I'm kind of trying to put together the two, uh, sorry, the four trees I'm focusing on. I'm trying to squish together a little bit more of those two trees on the left. So compositionally, it kind of works in the frame a little bit more. I didn't really want to lead the eye off the canvas, so that's why I kind of wanted them together. I might end up omitting that fourth tree and just concentrating on three trees and just, uh, you know, giving suggestion to the fourth tree on the left. We'll see what happens there. Oh, Jamie, hi! I miss you. I wish we got to get our boys together soon. Well, once this whole pandemic is over, I mean. And uh, Mira, thanks for seeing. Thanks for coming. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. And then I'm gonna kind of give the suggestion of those faraway trees back there. I'm gonna get back in there with my sienna. Just to get that mid ground in there again. start doing more wiping I think I'm sure you can tell that the light is starting to shift a bit we've got clouds building up a little bit more as the day progresses that those are all the mother nature elements we're playing with here You know, in snow sculpting, they have a saying, which is, uh, 
you know, even though you have three people on your team, you actually have a fourth teammate, which is Mother Nature. You never know what's going to happen. when I go on the nature I try to imagine well what things are like maybe back in the day like 200 years ago how was that tree back then how was the grass back then different plants and animals kind of interesting to think about the history of the landscape who was there what were they doing So one thing I'm doing is trying to be honest about what the tree is like, but also while omitting features that might be distracting to the viewer. Because in the end it has to make sense. And you know, I'm playing an optical illusion game with my painting. I'm not going to end up getting every branch, every twig, you know, that's not the point of the painting. The point of the painting is to get the feel of that tree. And there's a lot of information in here already. But that's why I'm, I'm choosing what I want to put in so I don't confuse you guys. Or myself. It's confusing. There's a lot of branches. Let's just be honest. A lot of branches. <laughs> All right. We want the 
essence of white oak. It's like adding just a little bit of saffron to that rice, you know? away those highlights. Put in the shadows. Wipe away where it's the brightest. Wipe it away, wipe it away. somewhere now. We really are. Okay, so I'm going to um, suggest those trees in the background now. doing paying attention to that light you know I'm going to step back and take a look. All right, I just want to shout out to a couple more people here that have joined us. If you're just joining us, thank you for being here. Um, I'm doing broadcasting live from Afton State Park. This is Plain Air with Heather um, at one of my favorite state parks here in southeastern Minnesota. Afton is about 30 minutes uh, east of St. Paul and is quick and easy to reach by car. It is busy today, so if you do come on out, be aware that there are a lot of people. Um, shout out to John McNair. Great to see you too, John. I'm so excited, you guys. John is a highly talented artist on the West Coast, and I'm, I just purchased one of his works, um, and I'm pretty excited. I'll share that with you guys later once it's in the mail. And uh, John White out in western Minnesota. Hi, John. We, I miss you. Uh, someday I hope we can do an art fair together again. He's a talented photographer, you guys. Check out John's work. Satish, nice to see you. Aners, great to see you too. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. All right. Wow. Okay, I'm going to kind of do a back and forth here a little bit. Okay, I see what I'm missing. spots in my painting. Of course
course, the clouds are shifting a little bit. The, they're building up. It's getting later in the day as that energy in the sky increases. Really cool. All right, a couple more things I want to pull out highlights, and then I'm actually going to get into painting the colors and mixing those colors up. Oh yeah, I like that dappled light. And just thinking about how that light is coming through those tree shadows there, I just want to pop that a little bit more so that it's a little more obvious that that's kind of what's going on there. I'm loving it. That's so cool. Okay, okay. And I gotta tell you, I don't like these clouds. In college, my teachers always said, if you don't like it, just, just get rid of it. Which uh, can seem scary and daunting sometimes. But you know, it's just the gosh darn truth. If you don't like it, get rid of it. Don't hem and haw about it, just do it. Just get rid of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that can be one of the scariest things, I swear. All right, you. I just want to establish again that there's this medium tone right where the branches kind of hit the sky. Back up and take a look. Yep, that's right. There we go. Okay. So, you can see I have a little bit of a mess going on here. I'm going to start cleaning up my mess. kind I have is just a tissue that's just for mess so I'm not using that on my canvas um, paper towel tissue leaves greebles you don't want greebles in your paint the second kind of rag I'm using is just this cotton you know it's just a like a flour sack rag or a dish towel rag um, it leaves a lot less greebles in your paint I'm not saying it doesn't leave any greebles but you can kind of pick out the greebles later if you need to So this broadcast, I got a little bit of paint right underneath my easel. That's okay. I'm just going to scrape it off and 
have it rejoin its paint brethren. Okay. So I think the first thing I'm going to start establishing is some of this blue sky. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave some space for those clouds. Blue's an easy one to kind of start with. I love skies. You know me. So uh, first, let's see. I'm going to get some of my white. Mix in some of my King's Blue. And bring in some Ultramarine. Not too much, just a little bit at a time because that's a dark color. Notice the sky almost has like, especially towards like the bottom, like this greenish tinge. It's like an atmosphere. So um, I'm gonna make a couple different colors of blue here. So uh, I'm actually gonna add to my palette, which is gonna help with that green tinge, a little phthalo blue. It's kind of a little bit on the greener end of blue. And actually, phthalo makes some really great skies, especially night skies. Oh my gosh, let me tell you. Okay, a little phthalo in there. Just a little smidge, just a little smidge. And just a little smidge of that yellow too. We just want to dirty up the atmosphere a little bit. That bottom part has a little bit of haze. This buttery consistency of these paints is just so nice. Oh my goodness, let me tell you. Under my palette knife is one of my happy things in my life. I kind of hold it up just to see if I'm like anywhere close. for the feel of a place. Accuracy, I can, if I sit down and like, you know, spend time with it, I can do accurate too, but I'm really more about the feel of a place. So I'm gonna get the feel in there. That wind is picking up a little bit. Can you hear it? I'm going to bring this close to you so you can see. I've got um, my, my light blue, my mid-tone blue, and my darker sky blue. That's fairly close. I'm going to apply it. Let's see what happens. If I don't like it, we'll do it again. I'm gonna go for a gore bristle brush on this one, just get a little texture in there. Uh, Silver Grand Prix Bright number six. If you're following along at home. <laughs> okay.
I'm establishing my horizon line. Just letting my bristles of my brush fall where I feel them to fall right now. a little more yellow in with my uh, my blue my light tone blue but I'm seeing over here like the, the color shift a little bit so because of where the sun is to like a little bit more dusty oh yeah yeah do you guys see that color I like that color that that's a good color okay oh yeah oh that's a moody that's moody you know me and moody not to forget to make sure to put some of those in there too where those background trees are We're just giving that suggestion of those background trees.
see that vulture in the sky? Turkey vultures. I'm going to continue to give some shout outs. We got Lamissa and Judy and Susie. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to bring us forward a little bit so you can see my canvas. Let's see, I'm adjusting your screen a little bit, okay? Fantastic. Let's see here. Looking cool. I'm, I'm liking, I really, I, oh my gosh, I just love like the optical illusion nature of painting. I think that's really cool. Do you see that beautiful cloud? Oh my gosh. Okay. How's that everyone at home? Hearts, good. Okay. I can also, well, you'll see my butt more if I am, if I'm here. So I guess I'll put it back, right back. <laughs> okay. Adjusted. Thanks for bearing with me as I adjust this camera. I just really want you to be able to see the colors that I'm working. Okay. Thanks, guys. feel of that wind right now. They're just 
with some beautiful wind going on and I just just want to be able to express it with my paint. those fallows coming in. Oh, it's just so nice to get those layers in. Oh my gosh. Very cool. Yes, loving it. Okay. I think uh, now that I've established some sky, I'm going to establish some ground. And if you're just tuning in here, uh, I am painting live today at Afton State Park. Um, this is one of my favorite state parks here in Minnesota. It's got a lot of the beauty of oak savannas that, are, that were predominant around here, uh, right near the St. Croix River. So in order to establish some of these uh, spring green tones coming in, I'm gonna start with yellow. Mix in some of my sap green. And just get a little bit of ultramarine in there too. Seeing some nice patches of green starting to come in. And since, you know, the green of fresh spring grass is coming up from underneath the uh, brown grass from last year, I'm laying that first, okay? Because that's, that's underneath, literally. trying not to think grass, grass, grass. I'm thinking tone, 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 okay? So as I'm doing it, I'm trying to make sure that I'm still 
considering value and color more than like what is the thing, right? texture shape all those lovely things that how we paint right around here too. It's kind of interesting because they're kind of facing the opposite direction of what the ones on the hill are facing. How these ones are kind of coming in at a different angle you know it's very organic right okay I'm gonna step back and take a look hey Susan how are you yes so many lovely birds you guys really lovely I the other day when I was here we saw a ton of robins I they must be uh, traveling north we saw um, downy woodpeckers we saw a pileated woodpecker um, gosh, what else? Oh, of course, lots of sparrows and things like that. Um, yeah, Afton State Park, it has great diversity, partially because, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of edge forest. Um, it's down in the, oh gosh, I, can, I don't know if I'm going to say right, riparian, riparian zone of the St. Croix River. It's also a, um, migratory flyway for Minnesota. So a lot of birds that travel south for the winter come up the St. Croix and then go up towards Duluth. So right now is actually a really fun time of year to be here at Afton. So I'm switching to a smaller brush right now. Um, I'm gonna try to get to chunk in some of this blue sky that's going on behind the trees. And uh, then later I'm gonna establish more of this ground here. It's important to like, uh, well, for my process, it's important to do different things and try to bring the entire painting together at once. So that way, no one part uh, is more, is, is too finished than the other. Because sometimes that can really throw a painting off. I like unifying things. Just kind of dip my bristle in here. That way, my bristles stay safe. <laughs> I'm hearing kids in the car passing us here. That's pretty fun. Okay, I need some more King's Blue Deep. There's that King's Blue Deep. I love the pigment load of this paint. This Michael Harding, I mean, this tube is heavy, okay? There's so much pigment in here. It's, it's just, it's a buttery, rich consistency. It's beautiful. It's everything you'd ever want from a paint. That Michael Harding man, they really know what to do. Okay, and I'm gonna mix some more. I gotta get more mid-tone. So, I'm mixing my titanium. 
medium white with my Michael Harding King's Blue Deep. Throw in there just a smidge of ultramarine to kind of dull it a little bit. And a little fallow to green it up. That should be pretty close to where we're at. Yep. Okay. fall where it can. Where my eyes and my hand kind of move it to, that's where it's falling on. Noticing a couple things here. We got some extra branches towards the edge. I gotta make sure to remember to leave some uh, background for it. Let the underpainting come through. That will give the suggestion of those branches. excited about laying down paint. I just gotta go back in and get rid of it. Okay. I'm just gonna lay in a little more burnt sienna to kind of put in that spot. There we go. There we go. Just joining us, thank you again. Um, I am painting live from Afton State Park, uh, one of my favorite regional parks here in Minnesota. It's in the southeastern part, right on the St. Croix River. over here and I just want to kind of capture them a little bit. They do kind of poke through.
ones are kind of puffy, they're kind of glowing. Noticing that the clouds have kind of a gray tone in them, so I'm going to take a little bit of my King's Blue Deep Mix for the mid-tone and add a little dioxin purple to get some of those nice gray tones. And a little bit of phthalo blue, because that's a good color. family. They've come with lunch. Which means I'll probably be going soon. That's all right. You guys probably have lunch to get to as well. I'm excited they're here get out of the house with all those kids. I commend them, man. I'll tell you what. I think both Ben and I have a lot more mutual understanding after being in the, cooped up in the house together. You know, we're, we're really working together as a team. And I bet, I bet a lot of you all are adjusting to the whole quarantine situation, too. Hopefully you're finding the same that you and your partner, you're just having to work as a team, you know? I think it's a good team building exercise. <laughs> team building, right? Heck yeah. Oh man, these clouds are so beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you could be here with me today checking this out. I think I'm probably T minus five minutes to going to eat lunch. So just to give you a heads up, we'll have about five more minutes of the broadcast. And I promise you that when I finish this painting, um, I will show you, uh, you know, you know me, I'm probably gonna show you progress of it throughout, you know, the time that I'm working on it. As you may know, I have other projects going on right now as well. So it might be a while till I get to this particular painting, but I will finish it, I promise, okay? That's a fun cloud, huh? All right, I'm going to back up and take a look. Oh yeah, that looks good. Uh, do one of the last shout outs before I, I sign off for the afternoon. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. This is uh, Plain Air Painting with Heather at Afton State Park. I am not a traditional plain air painter, but I do sure like to get outside. And uh, it's a beautiful day here at Afton. A couple shout outs before I sign off. Uh, let's see. 
We have Lucy. Hi, Lou. Miss you. Thanks for joining us. And Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. You know, this has been a really great day, a really good weekend so far. I'm so glad that we're having the opportunity to um, get to know each other a bit more through social media, through um, the joy of painting, and uh, you know, it's just really good to get outside too. And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take you with me for a moment. Hey, it's me again. All right. Looks like uh, that's coming along, isn't it? Wow. Way cool. Pretty excited. Well, thank you again. I'm going to be signing off. Uh, tomorrow is my last event for Virtual Art Crawl. Um, so, <laughs> I love you too, Julie. Hey, Judy. Thank you, Judy. That's very kind. Um, yeah, so the last events for Virtual Art Crawl will be tomorrow. I am going to be interviewed uh, by a friend here at the Schmidt. Um, don't miss it. Please, if you have any questions for me that you're dying to know, let me know. Please leave a comment here below and um, feel free to reach out with a message or an email. Um, once again, uh, if you're interested in purchasing any work, I have uh, my work up online here on my Facebook page and Instagram. And if you see something you like, reach out. You can PM me. Uh, you can email me at heather at freedlyarts.com. You can, uh, you know, send me a letter <laughs> here at the Schmidt. Uh, you know, I, it's so important for us to have art in our lives. And one of the things I think a lot of people are finding during this time is that when they're sitting around the house with their family doing things, or, you know, when their house is their business and their home, that it's really nice to have living and breathing art in your home space. It's, there's nothing like it. It brings joy and it brings me joy to share it with you. And I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, so once again, my interview tomorrow is at three. It's actually gonna be on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is at Friedly Arts, which is F as in Frank, R-I-E-D-L-I as in Igloo, A-R-T-S as in I make art with an S because I do snow sculpting as well. So I have lots of different arts that I do. Um, Friedly Arts, that's my Instagram handle. handle. Like, follow me, um, share this video with your friends. Oh, hi, Lisa. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Um, yeah, and get outside. It's so nice. You know, during this whole quarantine thing, of course, plein air painting brings me joy, but just even the feel of the wind on my face brings me joy and the sunshine in my eyes. And, and please take care of yourselves, take care of one another, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.